Tonight at 10, millions are waiting for routine surgery and treatment in England's hospitals because of the pandemic. Some 2 million have now been waiting for longer than 18 weeks, that's the official target, as revealed in the latest figures. As admissions double across England for patients with COVID, we report from one hospital preparing for the challenges of the winter months. If we see a flu season, if we see COVID rising, um, how we balance that with keeping all the other patients who need to be treated in the hospital coming through. Good evening. The damage being done to many hospital services in England in the wake of the pandemic is exposed by new NHS figures. More than 4 million patients are now waiting for routine surgery and treatments. Nearly half have been waiting for longer than the official target of 18 weeks. And doctors are warning that a second wave of the pandemic, especially during the winter months, could make things even worse. In fact, more than 110,000 people in England have been waiting for treatment for more than a year. That's the highest figure for 12 years. More than 20,000 cancer patients did start treatment in August, but that's a reduction of 5,000 on the same period last year. And hospital admissions for COVID are still rising, and they've doubled in the past two weeks across England. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, reports from a hospital in Bournemouth, which is preparing for the challenges ahead. Eight in the morning, and the pressure's already on at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital. Um, OK, next patient. Any idea people are staying away from A&E is a distant memory. She has regularly self-harmed over the last couple of years. All the bays filled up overnight. Now comes the staff handover. So she is a 24-year-old lady, again, known to the mental health team, who mm. had crisis last night. Irrespective of COVID, hospitals like this are facing up to the build-up of the usual winter pressures. Here, they've seen some of their busiest ever days in the emergency department. Dr. Farhad Islam is a senior consultant here. He's seen an increase in patients needing mental health crisis care. It might be a, a call for help, um, might be a psychiatric um, a problem, might be a, a self-harm patient, a person that's got mental problems, uh, mental health problems. So, um, you know, we're seeing the whole array of patients, but in amongst that, the, the, the rate of COVID is increasing. COVID case numbers are relatively low in the local area. So I think the goal today was to try and clear another bay if possible. But at this meeting they need to work out how to make space while protecting other patients. We do need to get another bay empty, I completely agree. Um, we're still seeing numbers of patients come in with non-COVID related conditions but we've got a small proportion of patients with COVID and we um, are unable to mix those pathways so we need to find a way to, um, to, to do that safely. So this is our intensive care unit that we have ready to use for the second surge of COVID. At the peak there were 20 patients in intensive care here, half with COVID. They've got room for more if needed. So we're all still fairly raw from last time. We're very used to having family members on the intensive care unit and suddenly be told that we can't see those family members and they can't see all the work that goes into helping their loved ones it was very difficult for the staff. And that anticipation of having to go back to that is quite traumatising for critical care staff. So can you just uh, take me through what we're doing? Uh, yeah, so we're actually going to be doing a, a double ward refurb here, which is the first time we've done this. Elsewhere, they're preparing for the usual winter challenges, creating a frailty unit to help the recovery of elderly patients and their safe return home. Okay, so you've been seen by our nursing team yep. and you've been seen by our surgical team. Some patients like Christopher are coming back in for non-urgent operations. I'm having um, a reconstructive surgery subtake. Christopher's ankle operation was postponed in March. He's pleased it's now about to be done, though the wait's been difficult. It's quite a lot of pain. Um, I'm on quite a lot of heavy dose painkillers. Um, it's difficult to walk really because I'm putting a lot more weight on my other leg. Yeah, pretty tricky. I asked the chief executive how they were tackling the backlog of operations put off because of COVID-19. We've been going through all the long waiters and really trying hard to get people who've been waiting longer. It's, none of us want that for our friends and family and none of our clinicians want that. Everybody wants to treat patients. We know how awful it is when people have to wait a long time. So it's a top priority. During the first surge, much of their focus was on the sickest COVID patients 
But now there are other worries as well. If we see a flu season, if we see COVID rising, um, how we balance that with keeping all the other pa patients who need to be treated in the hospital coming through in a timely way, um, that, that's going to be the biggest challenge. It'll be tough for staff, some still exhausted from their efforts earlier in the year. But they all want people to know they're there and ready to help patients, whatever their needs. Hugh Pym, BBC News, Bournemouth.